um, I want to talk about the weight of infidelity. Yes. Because I don't know... I know I discussed it with Carla Lane when yes. she was on, but I don't think I talked to you about it. No, because it was filmed after we did the first Right. Podcast. Okay, but we yeah. did. I, I think it was inspired by your piece, Becky, that you wrote for Asa Akira's Asa Erotica book, right? Correct. Which was an incredible, incredible piece, and you read it on the podcast, and it was like, I mean, the way that you write is not only amazing, but you read it really well with such passion. It was a very powerful piece. So tell me how you decided to take that and um, turn it into an actual scene? Well, um, I got a lot of positive feedback from the chapter that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I decided that actually this would really work well as a scene. Obviously, it needed to be adapted a little bit. And so I wrote a script based off the chapter. And I made it a little bit more taboo because I was submitting it to Brie Mills, who runs Mm puretaboo.com. And so it it has a similar theme. It it focuses on body image and the way that that weight is often used as a weapon against um, both men and women, but obviously my focus in this piece was, was women. And I wanted to use my position within the industry to create more inclusivity. So when I cast... The, the film and, and Brie gave me complete control over the cast. I wanted to have a true BBW performer. And Carla Lane was the first person to come to mind. She's mm-hmm. a she's a beautiful person, both inside and out. And turns out she's an incredible actress as well. And um, I I learned that very quickly with working closely with her um, for the weight of infidelity. And it actually uh, it's it's out, it's available for free on puredebut.com. So I encourage listeners to to go and watch it. Um, and it was actually covered by Jezebel, so it got mainstream media attention. I uh, got a lot of positive feedback from the adult community as well as the fans. And it was really nice to make uh, a porn featurette that had meaning, you know, that was powerful, that that looked at topics that are controversial and are not often the subject of adult entertainment. Yeah, I got to say, honestly, I really feel that that scene was probably my favorite project that anybody did this year. And there was a lot of really amazing stuff that people came out with this year, you know, with, um, you know, Abigail's Tushy Showcase. That was really amazing. Um, Obviously, your um, uh, I Am Angela piece, which we will get to. But that's what I loved about it was that it was the first time that I'd ever seen a porn scene and felt an emotional attachment to it mm. and kind of wanted to cry. Yeah. So can you actually tell the listeners exactly what the story is? So I am in the in the story. I'm married to Tommy Pistol, who is an incredible act, actor and uh, adult performer. And I'm married to him and it's an abusive relationship where he's using uh, food um, as a as a form of uh, power, uh, so he is controlling what I eat. He's watching my weekly weigh ins. He's nitpicking me on everything, everything that I put in my mouth, and basically encouraging me to lose weight. And no matter how much weight I lose, it's not good enough for him. On the flip side, you find out later in the piece, he's actually having an affair with Carla, who is a much curvier woman um, and a BBW in this industry, and. He, on the flip side, he's encouraging her to gain weight. So he is force feeding her. He is engaging in a fetish called feederism, which I'd like to point out quickly that feederism is not a form of abuse. It can, I mean, obviously in this case, it is being used as a form of abuse, but it is a, a fetish that can be, um, uh, can you can be involved in the fetish in a way that is completely safe and healthy and sensual and sane. But it's, it's yeah, like a, it's almost like a, a spinoff of kind of an S and M. It's like a power exchange kind of situation. Correct. And Carla, um, if you guys want to go back and learn more about that, listen to my podcast with Carla Lane. She explains that whole thing in, in a lot uh, better detail. Yeah, and and this piece was not supposed to to shame feederism in any way. Mm-hmm. This was And all, I don't feel that. Yeah. It did. No, it was clearly he was using it in a it, he he's engaging it in a way that is abusive and mm-hmm. and not consensual. Mm-hmm. Um and so the the point of it is is that this man is on one hand encouraging his wife to lose weight and on the other hand encouraging his mistress to gain weight. And so the point is that, you know, 
um, that weight is a weapon, that that food has power, that um, it's it looks at idealised body image and the way that it can have a negative impact on people's lives. And I won't tell you the the ending and why it's taboo, but um, that's that's essentially it. And it's it's very it's emotionally charged, but. In the end, the women are empowered together. Mm-hmm. They end up taking revenge against Tommy, so it's not pitting women against each other, which I really think is important because mm. a lot of scripts you get are like women fighting or female jealousy and, yeah. uh, you know, that's – I don't want to portray that kind of um, negative woman-to-woman interaction. Yeah. So instead of being angry at Carla, obviously I'm angry at, at Tommy, who mm-hmm. is the source of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of the problem. Right. Yeah. So and Tommy's Tommy's – Obviously, standing in for society and mm-hmm. and, and our, our views of beauty and stuff. Right. So Tommy did an amazing job because he actually felt, you know, quite uncomfortable about the things that he was saying to me because right. he was, you know, commenting. Um, yes, it's yes, we're acting, but he is commenting on you know things that I could perceive as real flaws in my body. You mm-hmm. know, not being thin enough. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not being pretty enough. Not being disciplined enough. And between takes, he was apologizing to me for the things that he was saying and yeah. and I could tell that it was really affecting him emotionally to play this really horrible character. Yeah. And he did an amazing job. Do you feel that personal experience was something that led you to want to create this piece? Like do mm. you feel that pressure of, you know, always having to be a certain way, look a certain way, especially because you're in front of the camera? Definitely. Um, I I can say that, you know, I'm in a place where I, I love my curves. Um, I'm very happy with the way that I look physically. But I'm also, as you know, I'm a very critical person. I'm very detail oriented. So I, could, I always look at myself and think of, oh, I could improve this, I could improve that. And we live in a society that has only recently started to embrace curves and thickness. You know, yeah. Growing up, I definitely thought I was too fat. It's society told me that. My, yes. And, and we even talked, I won't go too far into it because people can go back and listen to our our first podcast that we did together. But, you know, porn was the first place that I saw my curvy body represented in a positive light Mm. in fashion magazines and on television and in movies. Whenever a curvier woman was represented, it was not represented as 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 positive. Right. So I definitely grew up thinking that, oh, I need to lose weight. Oh, my curves aren't good enough. And it was through working in porn that I realized, oh, you know, there is a market for me. People, not everybody's going to like my body. That's fine. But there is a huge market that, that does love my body. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I find it interesting, um, and I know I've said this before, that, you know, we perceived women to be, to need to look and behave or whatever in a certain way you know, through media and films. And then like kind of when the internet came along and suddenly media became more controlled by the user because it wasn't just like, you know, when you watch TV, you're pretty much like fed what media thinks they want you to see. And then you're like, oh, that's that's what's right. That's what I need. But then like when the internet came along and especially social media, it almost, I feel almost like the consumer like had, got more of a voice and was yes. able to to choose what they actually liked. And so media started to recognize that and like follow that path. So now that's why I feel like you see in a lot of ads, they're trying to represent, you know, women of different body shapes and sizes and, um, you know, different sexual orientation, all that kind of stuff. I feel like the internet really like kind of pushed all of that forward um, and just... I don't know, just opened up doors for people to be like, you know what, this is not what I like. This is what I like. And and I'm this is acceptable. And I don't know. It it's just it's so different because, you know, I'm older, so I was around before the internet came along. And I just like things have changed so fast. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's really been a democratization of desire and a democratization yeah. of, you know, uh of people's body types. You know, we're far you see far more diversity. Mm-hmm. Even in mainstream media now, yeah. which is fantastic.